Cowboys battle the Colorado Buffalo. You can see the crowd has gathered here at Folsom Field. The teams have come onto the field getting set for the kickoff. Oklahoma State with Joey O'Donnell will kick off to Colorado. So the Buffalo wishbone, you see Loy Alexander at the bottom of your screen, Jojo Collins at the top. Collins is a very dangerous return man. They liken him to Cliff Branch here in Boulder. They haven't seen the likes of him since the days of Branch, of course, the great receiver for the now Los Angeles Raiders. A lot of yellow cards you'll see throughout the game. Maybe some of them falling onto the field. Don't confuse those with penalty markers. For the Orange Bowl, and they didn't have their quarterback against Nebraska. We're underway. A high kick coming down to Alexander. A couple of yards deep. He'll bring it out. And he gets to about the 16. He was stopped his momentum by Mike Hudson, number 10, who was the first man down there for Oklahoma State. So the Colorado Buffalo wishbone attack will put it in play at their own 16-yard line. And there is Hatcher coming out. He'll lead the offensive team. Eric Coyle, ever, just about an All-American pick, they tell us here at Colorado at center. He's the man to watch there. Well, the two wide receivers, Alexander, a great blocker. Embry will be an All-American. He's a great one, will be a great pro. We talked about Hatcher's ankle, but Ron Brown has 4-3 speed in the 40-yard dash. He makes that wishbone go, I'll tell you that. They'll go to Weatherspoon right up the middle on first down, and he runs into a host of tacklers. John Washington is there, number 80, and he'll be there all afternoon. Pickup of two, Oklahoma State defensively, of course, led by Leslie O'Neill, but John Washington is a very underrated tackle. A lot of people would vote him all big eight. Adams is a great player. A lot of these guys, because O'Neill, don't really get the recognition, but two very fine inside linebackers. Moore, of course, an all-Big 8 pick a year ago at the free safety spot defensively in the secondary for the Cowboys. Second and eight, loose snap. And Oklahoma State appears to have them all. No official signal yet. And now you see it at the 20-yard line. And if Colorado needs to avoid one thing it's turnovers deep in their own territory against this team i just said it a few minutes ago very exciting offense lots of turnovers they fumbled 20 times this year this is the 21st hatcher never had it and that's the 14th fumble they've lost out of the 21 that they've dropped remember hatcher's got a bad leg look at the guy who got it mark moore number 44 hatcher's got a bad leg and that'll change a lot of things turning and handling the ball he's having his problem Thomas is the tailback in the eye formation, and he gets the call on first down. Big hole over the left side. He's brought down by Deluzio. Don Deluzio, the sophomore out of Arvada, California. Or Colorado, I should say. The Oklahoma State offense in front. Hey, they're tough. All seniors on that right side. Blair is an excellent player. He's an all-league player. Weimer, a good receiver. Dillard's the guy to watch in the big play situation. Riley's their leading receiver. And Williams, of course, in the backfield. This is a great offensive backfield. Pickup of about four, second and six for the Cowboys. Trying to take advantage of the game. First turnover, Williams to the air, guns it out, incomplete. Intended on the far side for Weimer. And he underthrew him. And we saw yes, last week, as you look at Pat Jones, one of the finest gentlemen you'll meet in the college coaching profession. Williams had a little trouble underthrowing last week. Kyle Rappel, the nose tackle, a very good one. But Fairbanks and Coke on the outside of him, also active. Here, here they are. McMillan's a pro prospect. Remington and Deluzio, Colorado Players of the Year, respectively, in different years. Schubeck, also a big play guy. And this is a great secondary. Pickens, the best in the secondary. Big play here. Third and six. The draw to Thomas. Tries the left side, short of the first down. And I mean, he was hammered. Conley Smith, number 36, the junior out of Tucson, got him first. The key there, they got Rappold, the middle guard, down. In fact, he was limping a little bit. They got him on the ground. On a draw play, the middle guard has to defeat the center, hold his ground, and react to the drawback. Rappold was a disaster on that play because he got cut out from under him and hurt his leg, I think, and he just couldn't get up. Disaster for the defense, that is. Your middle guard goes down, you've got no pursuit, and can get in the way of other players. That's not good. Fourth and short on the season, Oklahoma State is three of four in fourth down situations. The one they missed was last week against Kansas in a similar situation. They're very big up front. They jumped on that one. The flags are down. Thomas gets the first down, but the right side of the line, Kev, appeared to have jumped. Look like Meacham or Blair on the right side. Now, these guys are huge, and they really don't need to jump. They have the weight advantage on just about everybody that they play. And that is a very big penalty. Now they'll send O'Donnell out for the field goal attempt. 
Good job by the Colorado defense. Watch the left side of your screen. That's Blair, number 72, trying to come down. He was trying to double team there, and he just got a little anxious and jumped off. Big break for Colorado. Five-yard penalty moves it back to the 16, so that means O'Donnell will tee it up at the 22, add the 10 in the end zone, a 32-yard attempt. He's 6 of 9 on the year. And he's just a freshman out of Perry, Oklahoma. And it looks like he shanked it to the right. A big lift for the Colorado defense. Back to the action here at Folsom Field. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Colley. While we were away, a couple of plays run by Colorado. They now face third and two, but the big sequence was that defensive stand for Colorado and the illegal procedure penalty against Oklahoma State that pushed them back after they'd recovered the Mark Hatcher fumble at the 20-yard line of Colorado. So we're scoreless with 12.06 remaining in the first quarter. And Hatcher is not moving real well on this ankle. He's going to keep it for close to a first down. It depends where they'll spot it. He was very close, and then he was knocked back by Harry Roberts and Mark Moore, but they're spotting it at first down yardage. It looks like he's got it. On the play before, Hatcher had a real bad time getting to the corner, but Coach McCartney told us yesterday, he said 60% in practice if you're injured sometimes becomes 95% in the game when you get that adrenaline going. He looked like he had it. You don't want to throw straight in there and ruin his red shirt. He said, I'll look at both of the quarterbacks right in their eyes, and I'll know who to play. First down, Colorado, their first of the game. They come out of the wishbone with Brown. He's the sprinter, and if he gets behind you, he stays there. Krebs made the tackle for Oklahoma State. He picked up five. Well, they've been feeding Brown bowling balls, trying to get his weight up. A great receiver last year. He's only 190 pounds, but you can see his average per rush. If he gets loose, he goes for the big one. That's what brings that average up, 6.1. This is a guy, if he could put on another 10 pounds, well, he'll have to do it. He's a senior. He'll have to do it for Pro Bowl. But he's probably slated as a uh, wide receiver in pro football anyway. Well, it was an all-Big 8 conference wide receiver a year ago, but a versatile performer switching to that left halfback spot. Weatherspoon, short yardage, Washington on top of him along with Krebs. You know, we talk about Brown and we talk about 4-3 speed, and that's all I can do is talk about it. Of course, you ran a 4-3, didn't you? When yeah, you I did. Uh, he had to push me off a cliff to get me going that fast. But... <laughs> You can see how excited they are over that five and two start here in Boulder this year. Not many people expected that. This was a team that was one in ten a year ago. Interesting how this team was built. We'll get into it later, later in the broadcast. But there was one class entirely redshirted, 31 out of 32, and then another class right behind it that wasn't. So there's a lot of sophomores on this team. Here's Brown. He makes a cut on Thompson and gets close to the first down, but he's short. Thompson did a good job to stay with. Uh, Ron Brown that time. We're going to see that one again. That's a counter off the wishbone. And the thing that tips it off is that Brown doesn't move. Watch number eight right there. See, he starts to go for the block. Everybody goes left. Brown comes back in the counter. Tell you what, with the kind of speed he has, if the tackle isn't made there, he's gone. And if Thompson doesn't stay at home, he's probably gone. Good job by Thompson. Now you're looking at the leading punter in the nation, Barry Helton. And what a story he has been. Because both of the Colorado kickers, the punter and the place kicker, were suspended from the team for disciplinary reasons before the year started. They came in not knowing anything about their kicking game, and all this guy's done is lead the nation. Whistles flying all over before the snap, so that would probably indicate Colorado took too much time. Yeah, and it's a good thing they did. That would have been blocked. The crowd was going crazy because the whistle blew two or three times. And State's Mike Hudson came in and put the wrap on the punter anyway. That that punt would have been blocked. They were having trouble with their blocking schemes before they hiked it. And uh, State State had it blocked, I believe. This guy, Helton, has not had a punt blocked all year long. He's kicked 12 punts of better than 50 yards. Watch the guys on the front line point to different players. What they're doing is getting their blocking scheme straight, and they didn't have it straight on the last one. State's got 10 people up. Bobby Riley is the only man deep. You can either man block or area block on this thing. When you area block, quite often, that's how they block the punt. Hudson trying to get himself in position to go in there again, and here he comes. He gets it off, and he nails it. What a treat this kid is. That one goes into the end zone, so from his own 34-yard line, that's just Press consent of Raycon Sports is prohibited. First down, Cowboys to their own 20. No score in the first quarter. Well run Thurman Thomas. That was a big hole that closed in a hurry. Barry Remington, the linebacker that you heard Kevin talk of so highly about in the open, 
coming up to make the stop. This guy's a great player, but watch what Thurman Thomas does to him. He does exactly the right thing. Goes with the flow, stays at home. He's got a shot, and Thurman gives him a little hip action, and down he goes. But Remington made the play, believe it or not, because he was in the hole, made Thurman Thomas slow down, and they were able to hold him to a four-yard gain. If he doesn't stay at home, he's gone all the way. Second and six. The low running back is Thomas over the right side, and he's drilled by Don Deluzio, the sophomore. Hey, Deluzio is active along with Remington. You don't find linebackers in this many bunches as good as these guys are. Top prospect in Colorado, 1984 from Arvada. Don Deluzio, he's too a great player. This is a good Colorado defense. Five TDs in the last four games for this defense. They can play with anybody. See the neck on that kid? He couldn't even button his top button. <laughs> Third and three for Oklahoma State. They'll run it with Thomas. Big hole over the left side. First down and then some. All the way out to the 39-yard line. Great blocking on the left side by Burton and Chuck Shanklin on that left side. Now, take a look here. You're going to see Burton's on the inside, number 66. This is Shanklin. He's the weak tackle. Pushes the linebacker out. And up the slot they come for big yardage. Now you're going to see it from behind the defense. They caved in the defense here. The linebacker gets caught inside. Remington can't get there. They got to do better than that. 13-yard pickup. Back to the action now. First down, Cowboys. Thomas again. Hops over about four guys and gains about five or six more. Good effort that time. Kyle Rappold got him from behind, number 91. You know, Thomas, we talked about him second in the Big 8 in rushing, but for the last two weeks, he's failed to gain 100 yards. Well, he's had that injury, and as a linebacker, you love when guys jump like that. A 250-pound back when he jumps weighs about three pounds, and he's helpless, and you love to see guys, and I know they tell Thurman Thomas not to jump. He could get hurt like that. He's playing a little bit banged up as it is. A thigh bruise, an ankle injury, a shoulder injury. Here's Will Timmons, the fullback, right up the middle, but he runs into Remington, and no further does he go. That big Oklahoma State line is really giving the Buffaloes fit up front. Fits up front. They have Kyle Rappold as the middle guard. He only weighs 245 pounds. The tackles, Fairbanks and Coker, 255 and 260 respectively. But up front, we talked about this last week against Kansas. You've got 275, 253, 262, 240. Meacham, he's just a baby. And then 275, Blair on the other side. So these guys can wear you down. But we didn't talk about the altitude. Yeah, did, did we, Kevin? No, oh, that's difficult as they measure for the first down, and they're going to be short as it turns out. You played at Wyoming. You know a little bit about playing in this thin air, and I know a little bit now after walking up these steps. <laughs> it's difficult. You lose your breath fast. Well, you know, you, at the end of practice, you got to tuck your tongue into your belt so you don't step on it up here. <laughs> and uh, when a team this big, and those big guys, when they have to move down the field and they're driving, it takes them 10, 15 plays to get down the field, they'll get tired. And uh, the altitude definitely advantage for the home team. You saw Bill McCartney on the Colorado sideline. Third and inches for Oklahoma State. What a job McCartney has done with this program here in Boulder. Thurman Thomas hurdles his way for the first down over the right side. A lot of black jerseys surrounding him over there. Huge crowd on hand here at Folsom Field today. And they haven't had the spirit here like this in a number of years. And Bill McCartney and his staff have brought it back. Came into a program, took over in June of 1982. Think about that. After spring ball, he met the team when they came back to play in the fall. And from that point on, he's tried to build. He's had three real tough years, but you can see he's done it right. He's got some great young players. There's the toss to Thomas. He looks a lot fresher than he did a week ago. Breaking tackles all the way down to the 31 of Colorado. Wouldn't you agree? He looks quicker than he did last week. He certainly does. He's getting those shoulders square, and they're, they're really hurting the right side of that Colorado defense. They're caving him in. Again, Shanklin and Burton and Tucker and Weimer on that left side, and sometimes the tight end, Dillard. They're caving in that defense, giving Thomas a lot of room to run. And as Kevin said, he's a lot quicker. He's getting out there faster and getting up field quicker. 18 yards, the pickup that time. Into the game for Oklahoma State, Kevin Simeon at one of the wide receiver spots. First down, Cowboys at the Colorado 30. They're moving. Started this drive at their 20. Thomas again, he was knocked by Rappold as he got to the line of scrimmage, but still fell forward for a couple of yards. Rappold's taking a beating from Colorado Springs. Here's a Colorado graphic defense. It's an excellent defense, allowing 300 yards a game, 17th in the nation. They've earned it. They played a real tough Nebraska team. Rappold, his dad, they called him, he went to Tulane, they called him the trash compactor. 
I don't know whether that's a compliment or not. I guess it's a, I guess he looked like a trash compactor. Kyle looks like his dad, short and wide. You don't want to cross a guy that they call a trash compactor. Williams in trouble, down he goes, and that's the man. Kyle Rappel, a sophomore out of Colorado Springs with his third sack of the year. Well, we just talked about this guy, a little bit of deja vu. Kyle, number 91, he's going to compact Ronnie Williams here. He beats the block, a super beat. He beat Doug Meacham there. Just Well, he, Doug Meacham now, that's a good point. Doug Meacham is about his size. They have him listed at 255 there. He must be eating since they printed the press guide. He's only listed at 245. But Meacham, as Rappo leaves the field, is about his size. And that's the guy he beat. Meacham's the smallest offensive lineman on the Cowboys squad or on the starting squad. Loss of nine, third and 17 for Oklahoma State. Williams the pass. Plenty of time, dumps it out to Nash, who can't catch it. And so the Colorado defense comes through again with the big play, this time coming from Rappold. That's really good coverage by the Colorado team. As we're going to take a look at the defense and secondary, the guy he wants to go to is Dillard, number 87. He's loose right there, doesn't hit him right away, makes a great checkoff when he comes into the flat. And I'll tell you, the offensive coordinator for the Cowboys should be happy because what Williams did as a sophomore, some seniors can't do. He checked off, he just didn't throw a good pass. That'll come in time. Thompson on the punt. It looked as though Williams had a lot of room to run, though. I wonder if he's a little gun-shy after that jaw injury that he suffered earlier in the year because he could have gotten them within field goal range. This punt hits at the five and takes a bad bounce for Oklahoma State, and they have trouble downing it. And now a flag is down. It looked as though they were going to down at a 37-yard punt, but it took a bounce behind Harry Roberts as he was get, he was down there in fine position, but an ineligible receiver downfield against the Cowboys. So it'll be a touchback. And Colorado will begin from their own 20 yard line. They don't want another chance at Thompson. Back live at Folsom Field here in Boulder, Colorado. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. The Buffaloes in their wishbone, first down at their own 20. No score in the first quarter. And as you can see, the sun is shining beautifully here in the Rocky Mountains. It is a gorgeous afternoon. Weatherspoon right up the gut. Carries a couple of people with him, including Jim Krebs, the senior out of Taft, Texas. And he picks up about five yards. Spoon and McCarty, the two great fullbacks. Spoon is 230, McCarty is 220, and both of these guys can go. Weatherspoon in there now. The only problem, he's fumbled the ball quite a bit this year. Weatherspoon has five lost fumbles so far, and he almost dropped that when they were pulling on it. State knows he has a, a tendency to drop it. Oklahoma State, if you just joined us, has had two very impressive offensive drives, but the longer they keep the game close in the first half, the better they like it. The pitch to Brown. If he turns the corner, he's gone. And they're able to chase him out of bounds. Moore came up from that free safety spot. But what I was alluding to is that Colorado's a much better first half team and Oklahoma State a much better team in the second half. First thing you have to do against the wishbone is take care of the fullback. They take care of the fullback right here. They stop, but he doesn't have the ball. They get it to Brown outside. Now, he makes a move on the sideline that he didn't need, and that's why he gets caught. If he goes and turns up field with that speed, I think he would have picked up big yardage, or at least more yardage. As it is, he gained a couple. And it'll be third and a long two. Hatcher in trouble. He's not going anywhere. Warren Thompson again with the big defensive play for the Cowboys. And so Colorado will have to punt it again. Responsibilities change defensively when you're talking about the wishbone. They change the guy who's on the pitch man. They change the guy who's on the quarterback. That time it was Warren Thompson. He knew what he had to do, and he stopped Hatcher immediately. Once you stop that quarterback with the ball, the play's over. Barry Helton, all he did was bang one 66 yards his first time. This guy's impressive. And Bobby Riley's elusive, but he couldn't even get his hands on the last one. What a weapon to have back there in this kid who leads the nation in punting. He borrowed six balls from the athletic department over the summer and kicked 75 to 100 a day with his mom and dad fielding it for him. Nearly has that one blocked. The whistle sounds, and I don't know if they took too much time again. Having same, some problems. Same problem. Same problem. They're pointing. They don't know what they want to do. Now, generally, the thing to do on a punting team is just close your gaps down. 
these guys are jumping around for Oklahoma State, doing a lot of different things. What you want to do offensively, you want to close your gaps down, get everybody shoulder to shoulder, and block people out in kind of a kind of a semicircle fashion. Uh, these guys are confused for Colorado, and they're taking too much time, and almost got it blocked again. Second time they've been victimized on their punting team with a delay of game penalty, and that will back Kelton to his own five-yard line before he touches this one off. So you can see the respect Riley has for him, though. He's back in his own 32 to receive the punt. Here they come again. Hudson's the guy that seems to be bothering him. He's still moving around. Kelton in trouble. Kicks it left footed. And did one heck of a job. Look at that. But something's wrong with that punting team. They don't know what they want to do. They don't know what they want to do. And they're pointing and they're making all sorts of gestures. Now they're going to get it from the outside here, but then the top side of the screen forces, geez, forces them to go left footed. That's incredible. This guy a soccer player or what? 51 yard punt left footed on the run. Back live, Folsom Field, Boulder, Colorado. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Scoreless, two and a half minutes left. First quarter, Oklahoma State. First down, and Thomas slips. And now he's not going anywhere. Deluzio grabbed him. Well, linebackers like you love to see a guy slip, don't you? Then you can really get him. Well, not in college because you can't hit him. But they hit him. When they go down, <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering about that. He went down. The play should have been over. Uh, running back's got to learn when he goes down not to get up. Interesting thing about the punter for uh, Colorado, Barry Helton, who's a quarterback in high school, threw for 2,700 yards, had 39 touchdown passes, and can kick with his left foot. Loss of the, and can kick well with his left foot. And second and 11, they flip it out to Thomas. He's got some people in front of him. But a very good defensive job from Mickey Pruitt, the strong safety out of the secondary, to make the tackle and save a big gainer. That's great defense by Colorado. We saw this thing go for big yardage last week against Kansas. They set it up very well. Williams runs it well. Those linemen tip it off when they take off to the right of the screen. Now watch the Colorado defense. All the dark shirts. Boom, boom. They're all there, and they're closing for a three-yard gain. That's incredible on a screen pass like that that's completed. Third and seven for Oklahoma State. They'll run it with Thomas. He's in trouble. He's not going anywhere. Gang tackled as he approached the 35-yard line, and they'll have to punt it away again. And this crowd loving every minute of Kyle Rappel's performance. Very conservative call by Oklahoma State, third and long in their own territory, and they have respect for what is a very strong Colorado defense. Look at the linebackers. They stay on their feet. That's what you want to do. Fight off the blocks, close the hole, and then the dark shirts cover them up. Good defense. Thompson on to punt. Jojo Collins is deep for Colorado. He's a dangerous return man, and Thompson really nails it. Collins is going to return it from his own 23. He can fly. Oh, and they just got a hand on him from behind, or he may have broken it. If he had a shorter shoestring, he'd have gone for a touchdown on that one. He's limping off. Just 40 seconds left here in the first quarter, and we're still scoreless. Colorado and Oklahoma State. 45-yard punt by Thompson. And Colorado with a fine return from Jojo Collins. A return of 14 yards up to their 38. And they're in business with their wishbone first and 10. In the last minute of the quarter, Weatherspoon gains a couple to the 40. Boy, is Weatherspoon big. John Washington met him head up at the line. Weatherspoon carried him for about a yard or two, 230 pounds with all that momentum. You know nothing about the wishbone. Everybody knows where they're going. One of the reasons McCartney went to the wishbone, as you look at Weatherspoon, is that the line blocking is a lot simpler than in other types of offenses. They can fire out because they know pretty simply what their blocking assignments are. The same for the fullback, the same for the running backs. There's no uncertainty. Second and eight for the Buffalo. Hatcher nearly caught them. He's going to throw the ball. He hangs it downfield, and he hits Ferrando, but it's knocked away. A great defensive play by Demise Williams. Hatcher threw a strike. It's a great pass and very tough to play pass defense against the wishbone because you're always looking run. They stretch your defense. They, you want to come up and help out on the option. And for Demise Williams to be back there in coverage, that's a great play. Oklahoma State offside. You saw that change of cadence by Hatcher, and he pulled him, and then he had a free one and nearly hit it. All right, here we go. Second down for Colorado. They run Weatherspoon into the gut, and he doesn't get very far. Washington was on top of him, number 80 for Oklahoma State, but 
Jim Krebs, the linebacker, number 55, was right in there, too. And, of course, the Cowboy is here. Well, how do you get that on the plane? Did he get through the tunnel like that? I'm wondering how he shaves. Need a big razor for that. Uh, one thing about the wishbone, too, is if you're an inside linebacker or a middle guard or a tackle and your responsibility is at fullback all day, whether he has the ball or not, you got to pound and pound and pound that guy all day. So you're involved in a, just a, a crunching uh, sort of uh, environment for all 60 minutes in the game. It's a very tough team to play, a wishbone team, because it's very physical. And now the first quarter has come to an end. Very quietly. And we're still scoreless. Colorado and, the, and, and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State had the better of the offense in the first quarter. They were able to move. They, had, they recovered a Colorado fumble at the buff 20-yard line, but couldn't get any points when O'Donnell missed the field goal. A short one that he just shanked. What does he call you? Well, <laughs> he hasn't met me yet. And, uh, based on these nicknames I'm looking at, I hope he never meets me. He calls uh, Symington, he calls him Bovi for a fat pig. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, they're friendly, right? Yeah, I hope they have a good sense of humor. Third and one for Colorado from their own 47. This is an appetizer for a wishbone. Weatherspoon dives forward. He's very close if he doesn't have it. The Buffaloes rejuvenated program. They're trying to win a third time here in the Big Eight this year, and that would be the first time they'd won three conference games since 1977. So you can see the program has been down, and Weatherspoon has the first down. And they went right over. Junior Ely and Pat Ryan on the left side there. And, uh, of course, you look for that fullback in short yardage. And the reason, again, they will spread out the defense. You can't stack against them because if the quarterback keeps it, you have to have people out there to take him. you got to have a guy in the pitch man. So you got that fullback one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two -on -two all the time. First down for Colorado. They're moving it in little bitty grabs. They're not really getting the big play, but this could be it on the reverse. Loy Alexander didn't get outside, and your great player, Mark Moore, that's what you look for from a great player is the great play. Well, that was incredible. They had Symington and Webb fighting over who was going to block Moore, and neither one got him. The two offensive linemen ran into each other. This thing, this thing's gone for 40 yards. When they hand it off, watch the top of your screen. Webb and... No, it's not Symington. It's Webb is 75. I think that was Coyle. And they both miss Moore. Moore makes the play on uh, Alexander. That's great defense by Moore. Great, great defense. Junior Ely is injured down on the field for Colorado. So what looked like a big play turns into a great defensive play from Moore. And that's why he's all big eight. And then some people say all American. 14 and a half minutes left in the half. And while they tend to Ely, we'll take a break here in Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado. You see the score. The Buffaloes with the pitch to Sanders. He's got some room outside. They close in a hurry on him as he gets into Oklahoma State territory. Loose ball, but the play had been blown dead. And it looked like he might go for some yardage that time, but they closed it and surrounded him in a hurry. Sanders is another one. He's from California. He's not a big guy, 5'8", 180 pounds, but he's very, very quick. This was expected to be a defensive battle. You can see it up there. Time of possession is about equal. The score is equal at zero. Four yards passing. We got two running teams here, folks, and they both give up about 15 points a game. So if you think you're going to see a lot of touchdowns, you're not. Just settle in. Enjoy the defense because it's pretty good. Third and six for Colorado. A little bit surprising that Oklahoma State hasn't passed for more. Now Colorado going to the air. Hatcher drilled as he threw. There's a flag down. It was intended for Ron Brown. And Every time uh, Bill McCartney sees Hatcher go down, I think he takes a big sigh of relief to see him get up. Let's check the flag. Thrown in the vicinity of the offensive line, which means that. Hold it. Leslie O'Neill's been real quiet today, and probably because of this option, he's not quiet here. A little over the top, and now it's open season on Hatcher. He pounded him pretty good there, and he's the one, of course, that caused the incompletion. Got to do, when you get one-on-one on O'Neal, -one on I don't know what to do with it. Probably grab him. Don't block him, as uh, Bill McCartney suggested. Well, they don't, you, you don't have to block him in the option. In, in the option, you can leave him alone. Here we got another punt. They've made this exciting. Helton gets this one off and hangs it up there in the wind. And that takes a Colorado bounce and goes out of bounds at the five-yard line. This Helton is something special. That's the eighth time he's steadied the ball inside the opponent's 20-yard line. I'm surprised he went with the right leg. He had so much success with the left leg last play. He's more accurate with this one. 42 yards, and he knocks it out of bounds with the five. You want to hear an incredible, I'll get a statistic. I'm not big on these things, but there's a couple of beauties here. 56 yards total for the year return yardage against him. 56 yards in seven games is all the yardage.
yards the return team could get. Excellent special teams for Colorado, leading the country not only in punting, but in net punting. Thurman Thomas over the right side, stacked up as he got to the line of scrimmage. Don Deluzio was there again. Great job by Deluzio. He's the off linebacker, number 49. The hole is there, but Thurman Thomas decides to take it off. Now watch 49. Steps up inside the block. You don't have to take on the block. If you can get up inside it, you can make the play. These guys have great instincts, and that's half the battle when you're playing linebacker. Lynn Beck in replacing Riley at the wide receiver spot for Oklahoma State. They're giving a steady dose of Thomas. Rappold wraps him up as he gets to the 10-yard line. Pickup of about four. They stay at home so well, the Buffaloes, and by that I mean they try to defeat their block, they don't over-pursue, and when Thurman Thomas, who's a great cutback runner, tries to go back across the grain, he's, there's a Buffalo standing there. Nobody wants to run into a Buffalo. Especially if you've seen Ralphie, the mascot yeah. down there. I don't want any part of Ralphie. Big play here, third and six for Oklahoma State. And they'll run it with Thomas again. And Colorado not fooled, and the play goes nowhere as McMillan over the top makes the tackle number 50. That was power football. Very conservative, Pat Jones. Now, you have to remember, early on, last year, early part of this year, he's a very conservative coach. He likes to run the ball. He doesn't like to make mistakes. He waited and waited on Kansas last week. Kansas made a mistake. He capitalized and won the game. He'll wait. He'll take his turn. He'll punt the ball. He's not going to put it up for grabs. And the play that beat Kansas, in effect, was a pass. Thompson, from his own goal line, kicking it away. Remember, Collins is deep. He's going to return this one. From his 44, he's in Oklahoma State territory at the 42. A 14-yard return by Collins. He's as good a kick return man as... Back live in Boulder, Bill McCartney, the Colorado coach, down on the sideline, talking to his defensive team that's been exquisite today, and they've given his offense great field position at the Oklahoma State 41-yard line. First down, scoreless game. Witherspoon, short yardage. As he tucks inside the 40, fumbles it, but the play had been blown dead. JoJo Collins, the, uh, the Buffalo punt return man, has been very close to breaking a return on each of his two returns. And you get the feeling that he gets another step in his history. Especially on a low punt like the last one. Junior Ely has an ankle injury. He's been taken in uh, for an x-ray to the locker room. An interesting note for Colorado, too. First five games, they started the same 22 guys. Did not have an injury every single game. Last two games, they've been getting banged up. And it's hurt them in key positions, especially the quarterback spot. Hatcher has the ball. Trying the right side, but he's nosed down as Moore came up, along with James Ham, the linebacker, number 40. Third and a long five. Weatherspoon diving with the fake, but Hatcher keeping it himself. Great fake from Weatherspoon. Great fake, and I think the thing about Hatcher, did you see how quick he went down when they got a hold of him? No support on the leg, and boy, he went down like a rock. I think if Hatcher was healthy, he could have dragged a little bit for some yardage. He's not a small guy. He's about 190 pounds. He used to be a tailback, but he went down like a rock on that play. I think they're going for it here. Fourth and short. The Buffaloes at the 32 of Oklahoma State. Boy, I'd stack the middle. Crowd. I'd stack the middle here because I don't think they think Hatcher can get to the corner. See if they give it to Weatherspoon. They do, and he's got the first down of the 30. Harry Roberts came up to make the tackle. But the big guy, the one they call Spoon up here in Boulder. And he went right behind the bovi. <laughs> Symington and Webb <laughs> doing their job. Simon, if you're interested about bovi, 6'2", 270 pound sophomore. And a transfer from Washburn in Topeka, Kansas. He was all conference for Washburn in 1983. Symington has come to Colorado, and he's a pretty good player here, too. Boy, you really look into their past, don't Yeah, you? I do, boy. I got a private detective on all these guys. <laughs> First down, the pitch goes to Brown, and a great defensive play on the corner by Hudson, or he was gone. He just got an ankle. Yeah, speaking of ankles, I think this is a great, a great point about Hatcher. Watch how quick he pitches, and watch Hatcher number six. He's having trouble moving, and this is almost a forward pass. The thing, and the pitch is good because it leads him makes the turn and you're right it actually it worked out as a good play it really didn't look very good but it worked out 
and got eight yards. When we say that if Ron Brown gets a step, he's gone, and it looks to you like he's not. Remember, this guy runs a 4 3 40. That's almost illegal. He could be arrested if he were running on the highway at that speed. Weatherspoon, the big guy, stacked up as he got to the 20. May have been a few inches short of the first down, depending on where they spot it. The ball is loose, but it's been blown dead. But boys will be boys, right? Crowd doesn't like it. A whistle not making a real big impact here this <laughs> afternoon. That was Coyle. And if you're an offensive center, if you get a chance to get the ball back after the snap, you're going to run whether the whistle's blown yeah, or not. The he, heck with the whistle. Yeah, he should have turned it around, though. His, uh, his end zone was in the other direction. Really pounded Witherspoon on that play. You could see them pulling at the ball. They know he has a, a little bit of a history of fumbling. I said earlier he's lost five this year. So the state defense really pulling when, uh, when Spoon gets the ball. They're trying to get it out of his hand. He did not get the first down. You can see how close he is to it, though. He needs to get to the 20. So it'll be third and inches. They're just two of six on third down conversions thus far. They bump into each other, but Hatcher ducks. O'Neill gets him from behind, but he ducks in there for the first down. Hatcher just not at full speed. He's a guy I think that we'd like to see at full speed, see what he can do. He's very quick, used to be a tailback, but look, he's hobbled. He needs to turn up field. He's having trouble turning up field, and partially because he's got white shirts on his back. And he's injured as he came up. He came up limping. But uh, he's going to go back into the huddle. I thought he was going to head off. Now Strait has come on. So it is Strait. I guess McCartney looked into his eyes and decided Alan Strait was the man. Well, not only that, he looked at the scoreboard. There's no score. They're on a 20-yard line with a first down. And Hatcher is in the open field. I think he's a little better. But somebody's going to have to run tough up there at the corner. And he needs a quarterback that can do that. And the handoff goes to Sanders. He just muscles his way for about four yards. He just followed the ball. And got himself going. Remember, the straight has an injured foot. He heard it playing slow pitch softball last summer, and it's just never come around. They're going to wait until the season's over and then make a decision on surgery. Peter, they ought to have a team podiatrist here. Peter, definitely a problem for Colorado, as you see, Hatcher. That Leslie, slow pitch softball gets you. <laughs> Leslie O'Neill has not had a real big day. He's made a couple of big plays, but he's going up against some pretty tough offensive linemen and a couple of more guys. As you see Brown with the double team, he just can't get inside. Here's straight, trying to turn the corner, knocked down as he gets to the 15. Washington was there. So was Krebs and Ham, the linebackers. A lot quicker to the corner. You could see it. Straight getting up there. He got met by a lot of Cowboys, but he's a little bit quicker than Hatcher. And they say he's going to be a great option quarterback. This Colorado wishbone has been so devastating that 23 times they've gotten inside the opponent's 20-yard line this year, and they've come away with a score 21 of those times, and 16 have been touchdowns. So they capitalize. They, they, they're very efficient inside, but they're going to have a tough down here. This third and long is very tough for the wishbone. Weatherspoon does not get it. He powers his way to about the 13-yard line. He was knocked down. Washington again, along with Krebs. Boy, they're doing the job, those two. And it's going to present a fourth down situation, and that means Larry Eckel is going to come on and try to get the Buffaloes the first points of the day. Now, this will be a 30-yard field goal and a very dangerous crosswind. It's 5 for 5 from this distance. I think, what will this be? Uh, this will be a 29-29. Five for five, 30 to 39. Six for six. Eckel with a 30 yard field goal, and Colorado breaks out on top with 546 left in the. On the strength of what they now rule officially a 29 yard field goal by Larry Eckel, Colorado has jumped out on top, three to nothing with 546 left in the first half that has been dominated by defense. It's a big three points in this game. There's not been a whole lot of offense. 3-3, and three, three, that'll get you a win if the other team doesn't get any. That's for sure. <laughs> it's an 11-play drive set up on the punt return by JoJo Collins. And they killed five and a half minutes off the clock with it. They're a ball control team, Colorado is. Here's Riley at his own two-yard line. Riley dives his way out to the 24, and it was the kicker, Larry Eckel, that got down there to trip him up. And Larry, I think, uh, very wisely got down there and got the toes, got a hold of those toes and made the tackle. Got real low on Riley. An injured player for Colorado, number 23, David Tate. 23-yard return that time. 
Maybe Tate is just fixing his shoe. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's down on one knee. Looked like he had an ankle problem. We've had enough of those ankle and foot problems here. Williams on first down to throw. They're starting to open it up now, and he hits Weimer at about the 30, and he's dropped over there. Mickey Pruitt, the first to get to him. That's a tough pass. He threw that a long way to the sideline. And a big change in the early philosophy. Now down three to nothing. Pat Jones really not opening it up in his own territory early in the game, but goes with a first down pass, a wide pass, which is kind of dangerous. Weimer last week, if you saw our telecast, a touchdown catch was the first of his career, and he's a fifth-year senior at Oklahoma State. So that was a big moment for him, and we were glad we could show it to you here on our Raycom Big 8 telecast. Second and five. The running play to Nash, who's in there to spell Thomas. And he is short of the first down. One thing you have to defeat when you go against the defense, you have to defeat that nose guard. In this case, it's Rappel, number 91. The center will block him, or I should say 97 here, which is not Rappel. But you get a double team. See, the center and the guard, if you can get that guy out, maybe pick off the linebacker, you can get some big yardage. Third down for the Cowboys, third and a long one. That was Tom Reinhardt in at middle guard. Here's Nash again, first down, fumbles the ball, Colorado has it. Big recovery for the Buffaloes, Lyle Pickens, the senior on a receipt of California, comes up with it. Mitch Nash, just a freshman, 185 pounds. He's very fast, but it won't do you very much good if you don't hold on to the ball. Nash has a hole. Gets hit right there. Helmet on the ball. They teach that. Good defense for Colorado, and they come up with it. Another thing I think about McCartney, the coach for Colorado, is you see Lyle Pickens. He's the one who caught the fumble, picked it up. McCartney, nine years with Bo Schembechler at Michigan as a defensive coordinator most of those years. He knows defense. Conley Smith made the hit. Straight's going to throw. And he underthrows JoJo Collins, who was open on the inside. And he got nailed by Leslie O'Neill, and that was the reason he didn't get that ball off. Now, in the passing situations that I can remember, on two occasions, O'Neill has been on the quarterback as he threw the ball. So I guess Bill McCartney's going to stay with straight. He's already blown the red shirt. You might as well keep him out there and see what he can do. Well, once you put him in there, not, I think that's a good call on first down because he's what he's trying to do is get the defensive backs to move back a little bit so his wishbone will work a little better. And that straight still has it. An excellent fake inside of the fullback and straight turn in the corner for about three or four yards. Boy, but Harry Roberts got him. That secondary came up fast, too, and Moore was coming up on him, too. They covered up real well on this play. Watch 44. He's going to come in a little late. Go, now, Straight has running room Go right ahead. here. But here's Moore. Look at that. Look at that tackle. And Harry Roberts comes in late. That's just great play from a safety to be able to read that quickly, come up, and make a tackle for a short game. Nobody tackled McCarty, the fullback, that time. And the coaches upstairs for Colorado may keep an eye on that. As Kevin said earlier, you kicked off in the mid-50s. Huge crowd here, along with Kevin Slayton, Kevin Kiley. We're glad to be here. Third and seven for the Buffalo. There's that counter to Brown again, and he was hit in the backfield by O'Neill. This is a team that passes for just 50 yards a game, and that's really pumped up. They don't throw the ball very much. Uh, their starting quarterback, Hatcher, had only, coming into this game, had only 12 completions and 33 attempts for the year. So when they get third and long, they're in trouble. They've got to get yardage. First two downs, they've got to get close, and maybe a third and two, third and three, something like that. Good defensive effort by Oklahoma State after the turnover forces a field goal attempt of 52 yards by Echo. He's 0 for 1 from 50 yards and more. He's got that one on its way, but it's well short. And hits about 10 yards short into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And the ball will belong to Oklahoma State, so a big lift for the Cowboys. Defensively, they are able to stop Colorado after they fumble the ball, as did Colorado earlier when the Buffalo offense fumbled the ball. That's our story, three to nothing, and Oklahoma State will take over at the 35. The report from the sidelines on Mark Hatcher, the Colorado quarterback, as he re-injured that ankle. That's not a surprise, but they say he'll probably return. First down, Oklahoma State. Williams stumbling as he comes out, flips it out for Riley, who's got a step. Nearly turned the corner, but Pickens able to trip him up. 
Riley's another kind of guy. If he turns the corner, see you later. There's a couple of game breakers. That's kind of funny as this defensive struggle. There's a couple of game breakers on both sides here. You got Brown, who could just, he could probably fly if he had wings. He could get going fast enough. And Riley, 2.56 to go here. And uh, State's going to open it up a little bit, try and get on the scoreboard. They trail by three. First down, Cowboys. They run the draw play to Thurman Thomas. Big yardage for him inside the Colorado 45. Finally brought down by David Tate, the sophomore from Denver, number 23. Psychology of this game, so interesting, of this game meaning football. There's Thurman Thomas. They throw on first down. They make the Colorado people, as well as myself, think they're going to open it up. So they loosen up a little bit on defense, start looking for pass. They come right back with a draw play. That's real good play calling by the Oklahoma State people. They're going to measure to see if Thomas gained the necessary 10 yards on first down. And it appears as though he's just a tad shy. Now this is the kind of play you love to call. Second and inches. And we'll see what Pat Jones brings out of the grab bag for Oklahoma State. Well this used to be a surprise when Bart Starr did it about 20 years ago but now nowadays I think defenses you say in the huddle look out for the pass watch out you know everybody's everybody's a little nervous I think a, a better down is like a to do this would be like a second and four or five, you know, to sneak a pass in there. They run into each other, and Timmons is stopped for a loss. Well, that play had disaster written all over it from the snap. Deluzio came up to stuff it, and they got a lot of help from Don Fairbanks, but it was Timmons and Williams colliding that cost them the play, and they lost a yard. Timmons doesn't carry the ball that much. You know, I think <laughs> he doesn't get a chance to get handoffs. It looked like Williams expected him to go to his left. Or his right after he turned around and Timmons was going to go the other way. So it is now third and a yard. The toss to Thomas. Good job by Thomas to get the first down because Deluzio was in the backfield about three yards deep and nearly had him. But as you said earlier, Thomas doesn't give you much to grab. Yeah, the worst thing he could do is have to try to tackle that guy one on one in the open field. Deluzio was there. Thomas has that ability to give you that limp leg and hop on one leg and, and get the yardage. If he needs a yard, he's going to get a yard. You see the story. Two minutes left in the first half. Cowboy first down at the Colorado 42. Oklahoma State has had some impressive drives, but as you said, Kevin, they seem to tire when they get downfield. Those big linemen in this thin air. Batted down on a great defensive play by Kurt Koch because J.R. Dillard was wide open the tight end. Well, Koch's a big guy, and that helps. You know, Koch's six foot seven, 260 pounds. 87 is Dillard. A little delay. They want to go to him. He says, oh, I'd have had it. He was wide open. And the reason that Koch was able to get it, that little short pass, you can't loft it. you got to throw it straight. That makes it a lower pass. And Koch was right there at 6'7 to stop it. Well, just think how high he was because Williams himself is 6'4. So it had to come from a pretty high line to begin with. On second and 10, Williams has the time and he's got Weimer wide open. He pays the price as Tate drills him, but that's a first down deep into Colorado territory with a minute 40 left in the half. And hey, Williams showed you something there. He drilled that ball. Williams has a lot of confidence here. He's looking off the secondary. Watch him turn all of a sudden. Bang. He's looking the other way. He turns, and you see it's kind of a zone. They give him too much room, and he's able to come up and make the catch. First down, Oklahoma State now driving at the Colorado 23. Here's Thomas having a big day. Out of bounds he goes inside the 10. They'll spot it at the 8-yard line, a 15-yard pickup for Thurman Thomas. He's rushed unofficially for about 89 yards as we have it up here. It's amazing when a team opens up their offense out of necessity. They're very conservative early. When they had to open it up and throw a little bit, the whole offense seemed to open up. This is a draw. It's a draw look. The, uh, that's Timmons making a block there on Remington. That helped. And Thomas so quick he gets, he gets loose. They used a little uh, pass blocking look there to slow down the Colorado secondary. First and goal for Oklahoma State. Impressive drive here. Thomas off the left side is wrapped up as he gets close to the six-yard line, but no further. The first man there to hit him was Don Fairbanks, the senior out of Lakewood. Well, with a minute 19 to go, they're going to have to go with power football close in, and, and now we'll see about the endurance factor. Oklahoma State with two timeouts remaining, and they're using one here. 
Minute 19 remaining in this half. Three to nothing. Colorado in the lead. Pat Jones has only lost to Oklahoma and Nebraska twice. Never lost to another team. He's 15 and three in those two years. Thomas over the right side headed for the end zone. And he is just shy. What an effort from Thurman Thomas. 5'11", 186 pounds of dynamite here. This guy's got the quicks, and you just saw the strength. Good lead block by Timmons. Thurman can smell the goal line. He's trying to get his nose across it. And Colorado wants to keep it short and get the ball. Good job by Deluzio, because Thurman obviously can't go across without the ball. He figured out grab the ball. Deluzio nearly did. <laughs> Another timeout for Oklahoma State. It's third and goal. You see where the ball is inside the one. And Oklahoma State still has one timeout remaining. I think the other timeout, the first timeout, was a let's take a rest timeout. These guys were pounding it down the field, and they called timeout, a good timeout, and uh, rested a little bit. They were able to fire off the ball, get the blocking, and Thurman almost got in. This might be another rest timeout. Or, or, or it could be let's not make a mistake timeout. Let's, let's think about it. Let's talk about it. Know what we're going to do with third and goal from a foot away. Well, I think I know what it's going to be. If it's the I formation, it's Thurman over the top. Yeah. And if it's, well, I'd say I think it'll be the I formation and Thurman, Thurman over, over the, the top. top. And if I'm a linebacker now and I'm playing, uh, I'm playing, they play a very tough goal line defense here. If I'm a linebacker, I'm going to catch Thurman. Here's the I. Look for the fullback and jump, jump. Oh. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. He was listening. He jumped. <laughs> And a whole lot of folks grabbed him when he jumped in the, the play continuing on. They still want another piece of Thurman, but he's got the last lap. Thomas going into the end zone. So Colorado, a defensive team that's given up just five touchdowns in the last four games. Very grudgingly yields one here to Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys with a minute six left in the half. Forge into the lead, 6-3 with a conversion to come from O'Donnell. For Thomas, his ninth rushing touchdown of the year, and O'Donnell is perfect. It's 7-3 Oklahoma State. But what a great first-half defensive effort from Colorado. They had shut out Oklahoma State until that very moment. Two great efforts by Thurman Thomas. Watch the height on this. That's the key. Look how high he gets. Colorado is there, but look at this guy. That's a six-foot high jump right there. Now you're going to look at it from the side. I want Just look how high he gets. Look at the helmets of the Colorado players. He's six feet off the ground, and that's what got him in. It wasn't strength, it was his calves. Attention alumni, Longmont and Boulder chapters. So Colorado finds themselves trailing for the first time today, seven to three. Both teams have had good scoring opportunities. And Oklahoma State and Pat Jones using their timeouts very wisely. When they got down there to a first and goal situation, did not want to come away empty handed as they did earlier in the game. Went on fourth down. They had to try a field goal and missed a short one after a third and inches illegal procedure penalty cost them a first down. That's a real good point, Kevin. And very, uh, I think the thing that strikes me about Pat Jones, an assistant for so many years, he's so Checking smart. He seems to be always two steps ahead thinking. He, you know, he, know, he knows tired football players make mistakes. He calls a timeout. He realizes the altitude may be a problem. Uh, he just makes real smart decisions. And uh, he may have been a, really a big factor in that touchdown there, those two timeouts. Alexander and Collins are deep. This is a driving kick that goes over the head of Collins. Good job by O'Donnell to drive that ball. He doesn't want JoJo Collins to get his hands on it and return it. Really, Colorado may not be capable of a drive like that. Straight still has it. He gets around the corner. Straight at the 35, the 37 before he's dropped. 17-yard pickup for the quarterback, Allen Straight. That's their longest run of the game. Well, the reason this thing worked was because the handoff took a long time. And Leslie O'Neill, he was after that thing. It's a good thing he didn't put it in Witherspoon's uh, belly there. But it took a long time, and the defense kind of got sucked in, and Straight took off down the field. But remember, in a wishbone, even if you pick up 17 yards, clock stops for first down, then starts again. You really can't kill the clock running the ball, or use the clock, I mean. He'll throw this time. Now he's in trouble. Good move by Straight. And it's dropped over on the side by Embry. He was triple covered, but Straight did a nice job to elude the rush. He did an excellent job, and uh, he threw it a little bit behind Embry, who had, as I said in the open, 51 catches, a Colorado record last year. He's got six this year, and he's the guy. If they get in a passing situation, he's going to have a lot of Cowboys running around him. I asked Bill McCartney yesterday how Embry was adjusting to that role of blocking 
instead of catching the ball. And he said that uh, Embry's father has played a great role in that. He told the John Embry that last year while you were catching all those balls, a lot of guys were blocking for you. Yeah. Now this year when they're running, you're blocking. And the pros will forget he's a great receiver. They'll get that. Straight gives it to Brown on the counter. Watch out here. He's hemmed in at midfield. Good defensive job that time by Demise Williams just to hold his ground and make sure Brown didn't break it. Well, they're going to make that thing work before the end of this game. They've run it three times. They got more success on that time than they have on the previous two. But that's a that's a game-breaking play. We just talked about John Embry and his blocking ability and uh, the fact that he's not catching as many balls plays a big part in this game. John Embry, turnout block here. And number eight right there as he slips inside of a good block by Emory and picks up big yardage. A kid like that who will give up the pass receiving, still do a job for you, blocking. Well, he's a valuable product when it comes to pro football. And Ron Brown, he won't do too badly either as a receiver in the pros. There's John Embry. Colorado has a first down at midfield with 33 seconds left in the half, trailing 7-3, and they use up one of their last two timeouts. But the thing now that Oklahoma State must consider is another long run of 15 to 20 yards, and they'll get in field goal position. Well, I split the bone here. I'd take Brown, put him outside. Uh, Embry, Embry really, Keenan is in at quarterback, and he's a better thrower. And I think I think what I do, what I would do, is split the bone. I put Brown out there, take a little pressure off of Embry, or put him in motion. And so he's not even in the game, right? Keenan started the last four games of last season when this Colorado team was a passing team. He nearly drops the snap, but he'll throw. And he guns it over the head of Loy Alexander, who was open when he turned in on the pattern, but Keenan waited too long. That was a terrible looking play. It just it just didn't seem to it never it just never seemed to get off right. It seemed like Keenan you know knew in the game having a little trouble handling the ball. And I was watching Embry. He ran kind of a kind of a lackadaisical pattern. I think they thought it was a procedure penalty. So it'll be second and 10 for Colorado from midfield with now 28 seconds remaining in the first half. Keenan again. Now the pressure down he goes. Warren Thompson got him from behind. He never saw him. First sack of the year for Thompson, the senior out of Dale City, Virginia. Everything they run, they run off this wishbone thing. They run that, that wishbone look, so it takes some time. He's got to fake it. Thompson likes that because that gives him more time to get to the quarterback, and he does. Wishbone teams have to run the wishbone look, and they can't just drop back straight, and, and that will create a problem when you have to pass the ball. Pat Jones stepped in. They didn't miss a beat, and what a job he's done for Oklahoma State. He's a guy that uh, took over a program that was really pumped up, doing well, and, boy, they've just been flying ever since. All he did was win 10 games last year. That's the most ever in Oklahoma State history and of course McCartney on the other hand here at Colorado turning this program around in just this season Keenan with a great move keeping it himself inside the 40 to the 39 but they don't have any more timeouts and there are eight seconds left nine seconds left and the clock stops for the first down and here comes Eckle to try a 55 yarder he's got to kick it lower he's got to get more of the ball the last time he kicked a floater, and there's too much wind up there. He's got to hit a line drive if he's going to get this. The wind is in his face as he gets it off. And that one's... State's offense coming back on the field after a very productive last drive that got them the only touchdown of the day. They'll be coming out pumped up thinking they can move against this Colorado defense, so it'll be a big series for the Buffalo defense. All kinds of yellow cards out on the field. We told you about that earlier. Michigan State in the third quarter. And I thought Minnesota would have that one pretty much their own way. Tough loss last week to Ohio State. Uh, Got to hurt him. And uh, is Foggy back in that game? He was supposed to play, but I'm not sure if he played. That, that one's at halftime now, and that's an earlier score we had for you. That's our score, 7-3 the Cowboys. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. And a host of thousands gathered in black and gold in the stadium here this afternoon as Colorado kicks off. And I mean Eckle nailed it. Out of the end zone on the fly. That's how you assure no run back. And all those yellow cards all over the field. I'm surprised that the officials have not uh, stopped play in order to get them off of there because that can be dangerous. He was short on two field goals, Eckle was. This time he had the wind at his back. Yeah. Makes a heck of a difference, doesn't it? That would have been a 150-yard field goal. Oklahoma State 93-26 in the second half. I don't really understand what that means. I've never been able to figure that out score by quarters. It, it basically comes down to 
what happens in the next two quarters in this game. First down for the Cowboys from their own 20 yard line and they run the ball with Thomas. Great cut back by Thomas. Look out here. He's finally dropped as he crosses the 35 yard line, but Solomon Wilcox made a sure tackle or he may have been gone. What a play by Solomon Wilcox and what a cutback here by Thurman Thomas. Remington, the whole defense, Rapole misses him. They all over pursue. Now watch, watch Wilcox. I mean, all he needs is one block there and he's gone. Pickup of 17 for Thomas. He's now over 100 yards on the day, and that's customary territory for him. He had been held under 100 in each of the last two games. Timmons, the fullback, and he doesn't get very far. Dan McMillan, number 50, wrapping him up. But look out for that play. They've got four linebackers for uh, Colorado. A four, it's a 3-4 defense. What they did, they ran Thurman Thomas wide, hoping the linebackers would go with him. They get a block on the middle guard, and then it's down the road for Timmons. And uh, they'll try that again before the end of the game. And that's a big play sometimes. It's an important series for the Colorado defense. The last time Oklahoma State had the ball, they scored a touchdown. And this man did most of it. Thomas, he's off to the races. I don't think anybody's going to catch him. See you later. 60 yards on the run for Thomas. I said it was an important series. And when he got a game breaker like that, we talked about the big play at halftime. And here it is in the opening series. And that was over in a hurry. A great block on Kurt Koch, number 95 of Colorado. He was drilled. He went down. And he, Thurman Thomas, went south with the ball for a touchdown. So they'll tack on the conversion in the person of Joey O'Donnell. Opening series, and that's a crusher for Colorado. 14 to 3. Now Oklahoma State in the lead, and we'll be back after this. Another look at this play here. <laughs> okay. Thurman Thomas, watch 95 in a dark jersey down right there on the ground. He didn't get over, he couldn't cut it off. The linebackers weren't there. And Thurman Thomas down the road. Great blocking. Certainly the winner of this game should have no problem gaining entry into one of the nicer bowls. Of course, they're all nice. They're all in nice weather places around December and January. Well, the loser of this game, too, has got a good shot at a decent bowl. We're talking uh, one loss and two losses for Colorado, one loss for Oklahoma State. Both of these are fine clubs, and I'm sure that they'll both, they'll both wind up in a bowl. That's a big lift for Oklahoma State, and for Colorado, they have to start thinking now. The last two times Oklahoma State has gotten the ball, they score touchdowns. That's a devastating uh, sequence for a, for a defense. They, it was not only the big play, but the plays earlier, just prior to that play, were good big plays for Oklahoma State. They just handled out physical, if that's a word. Well, it is Colorado now. Defense, yeah, they just coined it. <laughs> See if O'Donnell can kick away from Collins. He can't. The kick is short, and Collins takes it on the run at the 15, and he is drilled and dropped in his tracks by Kenneth Cumby. That's the kind of coverage you want on a game breaker like Collins. Short kick, high, the wind held it up. A lot of time to get downfield, and Cumby crashes him. Good day for Thurman. How about this for bad news for Colorado, though? We just received word from the bench that Allen Strait, the quarterback who replaced Hatcher, has separated his shoulder to go along with his foot injury. He won't return today, and he's got a redshirt season washed down the drain now as Keenan comes on to run the offense. And Keenan gets good yardage across the 25 out to the 26 yard line before he is taken down by Warren Thompson. We're, we still, uh, we're still waiting to see if Hatcher comes back. We were told that he would, but we haven't seen him. Marvin Hawkins injured for Oklahoma State on the play and didn't take Oklahoma State long, did it, Kev? Not no, even a minute. Certainly didn't. Three plays, 80 yards, 59 seconds, and uh, most of that 59 seconds was Thurman running down the field with the ball. This one's not over that. You know, interesting here that Craig Keenan is in at quarterback. He's a pretty good passer. And with straight out and Hatcher, who's expected to be back, and Ely, by the way, who was injured in the first half, the lineman is expected to be back. Keenan throws the ball, may open up the offense a little bit. All right, 14 to 3, Oklahoma State, 13 47. Marvin Hawkins on the Oklahoma State sideline, leaving the game. Weatherspoon carrying for Colorado. He got a couple close to the 30. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Glad you could join us around the country here on our Big 8 Raycom telecast. And here is Junior Ely back into the game now for Colorado, number 63, the left guard. And they've had problems since he went out. The Buffaloes went to two wide outs on that play. Uh, what, they, what they normally do is go with a tight end and one wide receiver, but 
what they did there was they put two wide outs out and tried to stretch it, tried to stretch the defense. They did not complete a pass in the first half. That speaks for itself. Third and two, and they give it to Brown. Brown sidestepping his way through the defenders, and it looked like he got the first down. Leslie O'Neill around his ankles. Third and three. The fullback will carry the ball. He'll also make some holes for you. And Witherspoon at 2:30, little roll block there. You think he'd stand up and pound somebody, take, try and get a shot back after he's been hit the whole game. Good job though. He created a hole. Brown was able to get in and get the first down. The important offensive series here for Colorado because they have had trouble moving the football, and of course it had problems with the injuries to the quarterbacks. And that leaves you some inconsistency. Keenan looking like he's run this wishbone all his life, but he got straightened up by Jim Krebs, and that'll get you hurt in a hurry. Yeah, you're, you, that, a great observation. I was going to say the same thing. Keenan better put his head down. It'll help you get more yardage if you get that head. That's why they give you shoulder pads so you, you can use them. Notice they don't give you they don't give you a big plate for your chest because they don't expect you to stick it out there for the defense to get at it. And Keenan's got to get down a little bit. If he runs like that, he's going to go on the injured list, too. He's a senior. He really ought to know better. Got to lean. If you lean, running back should lean. And a quarterback in a wishbone is a running back. He has to lean into the defense. It's second and five after a pickup of five. With an 11-point deficit to make up, you start to wonder if Colorado might start employing the tight end John Embry in their offense a little bit more. So he's got to keep an eye on all conference a year ago. And we talked about his production this year as a blocker. The state's pretty tuned into Embry. The guy, too, is the lead the lead back, uh, Smith, Sam Smith, the lead back in the wishbone. He could get loose for a pass. And we haven't heard much from Sam Smith. Brown going over the left side. Close to another first down, but I believe he'll be about a yard shy. Colorado has got to be careful not to get out of their game plan, though. And we're, we're guessing here that maybe they should pass and do this. But remember, this is a pretty good wishbone, and they're just down... Uh, 11 points if they can get a score here or in a few minutes uh, this game's got 11 minutes and 28 seconds to go in the third quarter so we've got a long way to go third and one Keenan rides with Weatherspoon and that's a sure ticket to a first down right over Eric Coyle they say Eric Coyle now might be the best center in the country they say that uh, he is among the best in the big eight and I guess that if you're among the big best in the big eight you're among the best in the country and he's a great player 6 to 270 just a junior he's just down the road from Longmont that's throw a rock I guess from here to Longmont it'll carry in this air <laughs> yeah, yeah if you had a mind and he's gained 18 pounds in the offseason and it, he's laying it all over the Oklahoma State people good player first down Colorado Keenan to throw the ball he drills it complete to Alexander at the 40. well you gotta like the way Keenan has run this football team especially here in the second half well you know what that's gonna do against the wishbone those defensive backs they like to creep up they like to come up there's the fake to the fullback everybody's looking Keenan pulls up Bang, strike, hit him right on the five. That's a great play, and that'll do a lot down the road against that Oklahoma State defense. Loy Alexander on the receiving end. What that's going to do now is make the safety start thinking pass a little back, put them back on their heels instead of their toes. 16-yard pickup, first down at the Cowboy 40. Only the third catch of the year for Loy Alexander. There goes Keenan. That's the play we saw near the end of the first half. He's running straight up again, and Moore busted him, and he nearly fumbled the ball. Runs too high. He's going to get pounded. He runs too high. He got hit by a safety there. If Leslie O'Neill ever gets a hold of him running like that, he'll break him in half. This is that play. It's a quarterback draw, a little fake to the fullback. They close down defensively. Thompson misses. He slides. But Moore, who seems to be everywhere when State needs him, makes the tackle. Now, that play will work all day. Question is, how many quarterbacks you want to run in there? And they've lost a couple today. Pick up a five, second and five. Those yellow cards, folks, you can see him flying in there. Those aren't penalty markers. Keenan keeping it again. He gets hit around the ankles this time by James Ham, the linebacker number 40. And he only got a couple. Marvin Keenan is running this offense. He's not your basic wishbone quarterback. He's a drop back passer. Drum fumbles the football. He better just jump on it, which he does. So on a third and three play, a bad break for Colorado. Yeah, he just dropped the snap. Well, we've seen a lot of that this year. That's uh, uncustomarily. 
Uh, the quarterbacks and centers exchanging problems. Of course, we've seen a lot of different quarterback combinations with the centers around the league. And a lot of quarterbacks in this game. You know, Coyle has snapped the ball to three different quarterbacks. That it always seems to come on a big play, though. I, I guess it's everybody gets a little pumped up and they you know, try to get out of there a little quick and the ball drop. Echo with a 54 yard attempt. And that one is well short. If he just kicked those things like he kicks off, he'd have plenty of distance. That was another floater. So that means that Oklahoma State will have respectable field position around their own 37 yard line and a first down. So that drive that looked good and promising for Colorado comes to an end as a result of a fumbled snap. Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley. Glad you could join us. We're coming your way live from Boulder, Colorado. Oklahoma State leading Colorado 14 3. First down Cowboys at their own 37. Thurman Thomas who's having one of those career days just keeps on adding to it gets up to the 45 a pickup of eight There's too much room for Thurman to run the holes are too big he's he's getting out there the linebackers are there but he has too much room to maneuver and he's he's so quick laterally that the linebackers just can't get there they're gonna have to come up a little quicker and close that hole he had a better than 240 yard rushing day against Washington in the season opener here goes Timmons, the fullback, and he gets close to the first down. May indeed have it near the 48-yard line. Thomas opens up so many things. He'll open up the passing game, the play action. They'll be able to go up on top with play action to him, hold the linebackers, opens up the fullback. So many things when he runs well, the Oklahoma State offense, pretty potent. And it's no secret that in the loss to Nebraska, he was held under 100 yards. And in the game last week against Kansas, in which the Jayhawks nearly beat Oklahoma State, he was held under 100 yards. And the offense sputtered both times. So first down, of course, they did have some big passing numbers against Nebraska. Well, they were down in that game, too. When you get down as far as they did against Nebraska, it kind of takes the running game out of your arsenal. You have to throw. And, and Williams responded very well in that game. Uh, big interception at the end of the game Nebraska got it and then he's been hurt really ever since he's had that thigh bruise I think this is probably the first week he's been healthy in a while and he has shown it a lot more quickness this week than we detected last week in Thurman Town those injuries have a funny way of slowing it. here's the draw to Thomas he's hit by the linebacker in a very good effort that time by Deluzio because had he not been there Thomas might have been off to the races again well they had to, they, I guess they heard me about closing the holes they had Remington number 40 is going to blitz on this play he takes the hole to the left here's 40 on the blitz now he takes away this side Thomas immediately goes Deluzio reads it gets help out there from McMillan and they're able to pull him down for a short game Colorado beginning to take chances defensively give him one second and nine Riley and Weimer both in the game in wide receiver spots and Williams will pass. He's looking for Thomas. He's out of the pocket. Now he's down. Dan McMillan with his sixth sack of the year. The best pass rusher on this defensive team. What a job by McMillan. Now this is the guy they say the pro scouts love and they ought to. He's 6'4", 235, a senior, number 50. He also runs a 4'6", and look at the strength. He throws the offensive lineman down and still has enough to run down Williams. That's just a great play by a pretty good football player. And Williams is 6'4", 210, so he didn't just cast a fly down either after he got hold of him. A big loss on the play of 10, maybe 11, let's call it, back to the 40-yard line. Screen and draw here if you're a defensive player. Third and about 19. Boy, Thomas has a chance to pick his hole, but there is none. And he's dropped by Kyle Rappold, among others. That's Pat Jones again. Pat Jones says, you want to beat me, you beat me. I'm not going to beat myself, put it up third and long, and have one of your guys pick it off. He goes with a little draw there to the eye back, and he'll turn the ball back over to Colorado. Oklahoma State with a quick snap. They want to get the punt off quickly, and this is the kind Collins will return, but the up man calls for the fair catch for Rondo. Colorado went with the block. There was nobody back there to block for the punt receiver, so he did the right thing. And they got that punt off so quickly, Oklahoma State hustling onto the field, going on a quick snap and getting rid of it. 31-yard punt, very short kick, and Colorado takes over. First down on their own 27. It's a good defensive series for the Buffaloes, and remember their coach, Bill McCartney, he's a defensive coach, came from Michigan. He was defensive coordinator up there, and he knows how to change defenses up when he's getting beat. McCarty now in at fullback for Colorado, replacing Witherspoon, and McCarty carries it over the left side, running hard out to the 36-yard line. 
McCarty just a sophomore and a hometown kid from here in Boulder. He lives over the hill, and if you think that's a second teamer in there, forget it. Him and Witherspoon dead even. They're both considered starters, and maybe McCarty has a little more speed, and Witherspoon has the power, and speed is what they need now. They need somebody to break it up the middle. Pickup of nine, second and one for the Buffalo. That's the kind of first down play you need from the wishbone. There he goes again. McCarty, big yardage again. Got about six more, five more, up to the 41-yard line. Great blocking by Coyle and Symington on the right side, opening up some holes. These guys have all got those necks. They've come right out of the Nebraska School of Neck Development. There's a little, there's a little thing in the back there where you hook the air hose up and you pump those things <laughs> up. I don't know, ladies, is that attractive? <laughs> right to Kevin Kiley <laughs> and express your opinion on it. Here's Sanders skittering his way over the left side, and he gets a couple also. That play looks slow in developing, but he still made a gain out of it. State was there. Here's Brown, the big speed. If they could just get him loose, they want to get him loose. You remember, he's a wide receiver. He's got a block. He's got that thing down pat where you hit the ground, you kind of roll over the guy's shoes. It's really tough for a guy. This guy was a leading receiver in the big eight, or one of the leading receivers, and he's got to play a lead blocker. That's tough. That's tough, and he's in there for his running ability, not his blocking. Second and eight. McCarty keeps the ball and gets just about three to the 45. Everybody had a hand on him, led by James Ham, the senior linebacker out of Merritt Island, Florida, number 40 on the bottom of the pile. Well, what Colorado has to do now, they've got to throw the ball on first down. It's third down now. But they have to put something in the mind of the Cowboys secondary and the defense that they're not just going to run the ball. They've got to start getting them to make different adjustments. Uh, they don't want to get into these third and long situations because they become too predictable. Third and six. Keenan will throw. Thompson chasing him down. He gets it out to Sanders, makes a move, but he's going to be short of the first down. Excellent defensive work from Oklahoma State. The wishbone's really pretty easy to, to when it's a predictable like that in a passing situation. Remember, the back has to come out of the backfield and catch a pass, so he's further back from the line of scrimmage. If it's third and seven, he's actually got to go 10 yards for a first down, and they're pretty easy to read. They've got to change up a little bit now, Colorado. We're getting down to late in the third quarter, and they need a score. Barry Helton on, leading the nation in punting. His worst punt of this day was 42 yards. He had a left-footed 51-yarder on the run. This one is not his best effort. Riley calling for the fair catch, and he nearly got the corner, but it rolls into the end zone. And that one will go as a 54-yard punt. And Oklahoma State with a first down at their own 20. 3.52 left third quarter. We'll be back to Boulder. 14-3, Oklahoma State in the lead. Back live at Folsom Field on the Colorado University campus. Kevin Slate along with Kevin Kiley. First down, Oklahoma State. Thomas in trouble. They strung it out well. What a job by the middle guard, Kyle Rappold. Just a great job. The center for Oklahoma State trying to block him, but he just rode the thing right to the sideline and made the tackle. That's just an incredible play. So a pickup of a yard for Thomas who's enjoying one of his finest days. He is replaced now in the lineup by the freshman Nash. Second down and nine for Oklahoma State. Thomas getting a well-deserved rest. Nash, who fumbled earlier, big hole. Gets across the 25 before he's hemmed in. Good job by Conley Smith, the junior linebacker, number 36, to make the tackle. This time, the middle guard's so important, number 91. It's double teamed here. Tucker, they just ride him out, and that's why there's such a big hole. He's expected to get double teamed, but his job is really to get down low and make a pile. If he can't defeat the block, don't let him drive him back like that. That creates too big of a hole. Middle guard's got to occupy the center of the defense somehow. Get lower. Third and four for Oklahoma State. Thurman Thomas back in there, and he's tripped up. He's short of the first down, a big defensive play that time by Conley Smith again. 
He got some help that time also from Deluzio. Well, this is great defense and very conservative offense by Pat Jones. He needs four yards. They close down hard. Remington on the ground there. The defense was able to come in and make the play. Thompson on to punt it away. Let's see if JoJo Collins can get a return. Colorado needs the big play from a game breaker and he really nails it. No return here folks. Collins trying to make an over the shoulder catch and then he just dives on it. You never know which way the official will call that even if you don't touch it if it looks like you did you better go get on it. So it'll be at the 16 yard line where Colorado will take over. We're coming your way from the beautiful campus to the University of Colorado Folsom Field Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley a 58 yard punt by Rich Thompson of Oklahoma State has Colorado hemmed in and they run the fullback but Kev, that's been the story of the second half they have not had good field position. Well well they, on their last drive they got some good field position they got down they haven't started with good field position you're right Kev but they got down into uh, state territory and what they're doing is they're becoming predictable and uh, at this point. I feel you got to live and die with the wishbone if you're doing well with it. But here it's you like to avoid death if possible. And, and here they really need to throw the ball on the early downs a little more and, and break up that secondary for state. The third down plays have hurt them. And here's Keenan running the option. He pitches it to Brown. He needs a block and he gets it. And he has to go out of bounds near the 25 yard line. Just ran out of room. Well, Brown needs to turn his shoulders a little quicker and get upfield a little quicker. With that speed's not going to do him any good going to the sideline. The block was there. He needed to get square immediately and drive for that first down. Seems like they could have got more than than eight or nine yards on that play. It looked as though it was going to be a big play, and he just ran out of bounds. So now it's a third and short, third and a yard. But that's a weapon that Colorado has: the great speed of Ron Brown. They need to start converting these situations. Keenan keeping it himself and he gets the first down and he was gang tackled or got close to the first down. Depends on where they spot it. Wrong guy to carry the ball. We talked about it early. He runs so high. He doesn't get that lean in that drive. They need a guy who can get low and drive for a first down. They spotted it back and I don't think where they put the ball that he is going to have the first down. No, they stopped him. And the reason they stopped him was because he went in there real high and they were able to turn him back over on his back. If you're low, you've got the great momentum. And it's that third down bugaboo that is hurting Colorado in the second half. They just can't seem to make the yardage. He's short again. And you, you can almost not afford to gamble at your own 26 yard line. But they're going to I think. They're going to go for it. Troy Wolf an extra tight end comes in number 41. Well, you got to figure that a wishbone can't be stopped on inches but. Well, you, the thing is here now. When you stop the quarterback and you got to figure they're not going to go wide on short yardage, you got to stop that fullback in short yardage. It's got to be. They come. Got to be Weatherspoon. Now he keeps it himself and has the first down. None of the other linemen moved. A little bit of trickery by the Colorado offense and it works. That's the old junior college play. You don't go on sound, you go on touch. The quarterback comes back, he touches the center on the butt, they dive, and, it, and generally, see, defense goes on movement. The rest of the guys don't move so the rest of the defense doesn't move and he's able to pick up a first down. Well he didn't get a very generous spot by the officials here. It looked like he gained two three yards and look at how close it's going to be. He's got, got the first gotta down. Have it, gotta have it. Yeah. But they moved it back a half yard. First down Colorado. That's a good play there. That's a tough play to stop. Of course remember it's it's almost like it's almost like that naked reverse or bootleg There's nobody's moving on your team. So when you go left to the center if you happen to meet up with a defensive player it's you and him. First down Colorado after a fourth down gamble deep in their own territory pays off with 20 seconds left in the quarter the counter to Brown and he's tripped up and give credit to James Ham the linebacker number 40 who made a great play. Ham reading Brown all the way he never moved until Brown moved and he followed him right into the hole and made the play. We've talked about these linebackers talked about them in the open. They're really unheralded. Leslie O'Neill gets a lot of the publicity but those are pretty good linebackers in there. And the third quarter has expired here in Folsom Field in Boulder Colorado. 14 to 3 Oklahoma State leading Colorado. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Beautiful sky over the Rocky Mountains here in Boulder Colorado Folsom Field 
14 to 3 Oklahoma State leads as we enter the fourth quarter and now it becomes important for Colorado not only to move the football but for them to score some points. If this is not a passing down Kevin and I've never seen one in my life and the wishbone I, I, I kind of touched on it before they go through all that rigmarole with the fake to the fullback and they do it on passing downs too. Uh, it becomes really it becomes really almost kind of silly really at this point because the defense starts playing pass it just takes you longer to get back and throw a pass. Bull bids on the line everywhere around the Big Eight and there may be one on the line next week when Kansas plays Colorado and Lawrence. On this second down play the reverse to Collins he needs to outrun Roberts who diagnosed it well and makes the tackle. And Roberts gets a little bit extracurricular there and he's lucky he didn't get a flag. Problem with these plays are that state is now looking for him. Colorado needs two scores. And so they're just looking the, the white guys are staying at home. The linebackers are playing a little deeper and the result of that is that when Collins gets out there there's a lot of field but there's also some white shirts out there. That's a nice tack. Harry Roberts the senior out of Muskogee Oklahoma. He's an Okie from Muskogee. Third down play for Colorado. Definite passing situation in Keenan under heavy brush goes to the air and Ferrando makes a leaping catch. One official wanted to call it a catch. The other one said no. You're absolutely right. The one official called it a call it a catch and the other one said no immediately. And I think the difference really was the guy who made the call first. It seemed like the guy who said no just called it first. This is a little half roll. It's a great pass. A pretty good catch by Ferrando. But the defense is really what makes the difference. A super hit causes him to drop the ball. Now I don't believe it was a reception. But watch this guy. What? Take it a little further. What? Whoop. OK. Well that. That was the guy right there that was going to call it a catch. Punting situation again for Colorado and Barry Helton on. He needs to touch one off here. And he does. Riley back at his own 25 with the fair catch. So another super job from the putting of Helton. And State just doesn't want to make a mistake, and that's just great coaching. They get fair catch when they need to. They don't throw the pass where they could get caught throwing an interception. They figure if he catches the ball, the play's over. No fumble on the return. Not going to give Colorado an opening. If the Buffaloes are going to come back, says Pat Jones, you're going to have to earn it. 47-yard punt by Helton. He has not damaged his standing as the nation's leading punter today. So first down for Oklahoma State and they can start working the clock 14 minutes left in the game and they own an 11 point lead and they have Thurman Thomas who's having a great day Will Timmons right up the middle and he is met immediately by Dan McMillan. Nice job by Rappole holding his ground at middle guard giving McMillan a chance to close from the outside linebacker position. Talked about Rappole 5'11 245 now 255 he's just a sophomore and maybe we should talk a little bit about the youth of this team uh, Rappold and Coke are sophomores McMillan's a senior Remington a junior Deluzio a sophomore Schubeck the other linebacker a junior and it goes on and on this is a young talented team for Colorado three quarters of this team are freshmen and sophomores and they gang tackled Thurman Thomas and I mean they made him pay for that one middle guard has got he's the key to the whole defense because he's the guy that's got to hold his ground and then he's got to get off the ball and pursue and that's just what Kyle does. Dad was the trash compactor. I don't know what this equates to but Thomas right there goes down and the reason I got let's qualify that because he was short and wide like a trash compactor. I guess that's the only reason <laughs> and it forces them into a third and seven situation. Interesting to see what Oklahoma State calls and they'll run it with Timmons like you said Kevin they're not going to give you a chance as Deluzio brings him down. The Colorado defense needing a turnover and they're not going to get it with plays like that. Pat Jones saying to his defense I've got confidence in you. They try to bust it up the middle but Timmons has nowhere to go. He's no Thurman Thomas. He doesn't have that outside speed. So the defense covers him. Say about this defense too and McCartney at Michigan. He was once voted the Big Ten player of the week as a coach. <laughs> for what he did against Purdue and Mark Herman he devised the defense that shut him down he was a Big Ten player of the week Thompson hangs it high Collins back he'll return it from his 24 makes a nice first move but Hudson is there to bring him down Mike Hudson the junior strong safety for Oklahoma State playing on special teams and doing a great job all around.
12.08 left, 14-3 Oklahoma State. We'll be back to Boulder after this. Back live at Folsom Field, Kevin Slayton along with Kevin Kiley, fourth quarter, 12.08 remaining. Colorado with the ball, but they need to get it going. Kev, I'm playing pass here, Kev. Keenan still has it. He tries to cut up field, and he's not going anywhere. He's wrestled to the ground. I and the crowd believe. getting restless, as I know. I can't believe it. I mean, I just can't believe it. The kid can throw pretty well. First down is the down to throw against this team. Now we're looking for pass, screen, draw, all that stuff. You're looking for something that's conservative, something that is safe, but will get you big yardage. That's generally screen, draw, maybe a counter or a reverse. If you're Colorado, you start thinking, we need the big play, and they need it desperately. And they run the fullback through. McCarty running hard, carrying people near midfield. Well, that works. <laughs> When you're handing it to McCarty, it works real well. This is probably the only offense in the country. We've got a wide receiver blocking for a 230-pound fullback. But here it is, Ron Brown on Roberts, and that's a super block. John Embry, we talked about John Embry, how he doesn't catch many. He caught one here. It wasn't a pass, but a boo. That's a good block there, too, and McCarty. What a job he did running the ball. Two blocks there as fine as you can see it. Now they go to the air on first down looking for Ferrando. Keenan's going to tuck it upfield. Washington had a shot at him and missed him and he gained six or seven. He's elusive. Washington looked like he was going to bury him for about a two yard gain. But Keenan ducked in and gained six or seven. That was your first down pass and Ferrando. And Embry wide open. Ferrando was covered. Embry was wide open. But Keenan, remember, this isn't a passing team. And uh, these quarterbacks, they're not legitimate drop back quarterbacks that read defenses, sit back. They do. Th they expect when they look up, run and play action, the guy's wide open and they just throw the ball to him. Pickup of seven, second down and three. Keenan still has it. He better tuck it away and he gets hit and he'll go down just shy of the 30, maybe cross the 30. Excellent running by Keenan. Courtesy of McCarty, because of McCarty's run, they closed real hard on the fullback, stopped him, and that left the corner open. When one thing works, a lot of things will work because it makes those defenders think, uh-oh, here comes the fullback again, or uh-oh, they're going to throw the ball, and they start to overcompensate. That kid's got to get down when he runs. He's getting away with murder. First and 10 from the Oklahoma State 30 for the Buffaloes as they charge with 10 minutes remaining. Keenan pitching it to Brown. He pitched that one too soon, and Brown's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that you're play right. Had white shirts all over. It. You're right. He 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 keyed the play, tipped the play too soon, and also Brown was too deep, and Sanders was too deep. So by the time they got to the line of scrimmage, I mean they had run for three yards already. It'll be second and ten for the Buffalo. You got in the, in the option. You got to force them. You got to force him to make a decision on the corner. He didn't do that on that play on the wide side of the field, and everybody just came a running. Keenan up the middle again. Tries to cut it outside, and that cost him yardage. What a sure tackle from Mike Hudson, the junior out of Hominy, Oklahoma. Mark Moore a little late on that play. Very close to a penalty. Coming in late, number 44, and uh, that could have been a big one had it been called. He, what? Keenan did on that play. He tried to try to get the first down. He gave up a little yardage, tried to get back and around, and that was a pretty good decision on his on his part. Some of the other Big Eight action around the country. Missouri looking for the first win. Nebraska, that's not surprising, is it? Kansas, Oklahoma, that's going to be a battle. Here's Brown on that counter. The hole was there, but it closed in a hurry. A great defensive job by Jim Krebs, number 55, who tripped him up. You were right about the hole, and the reason it closed. A counter is almost like a draw. See the delay? It takes a long time for him to get there. By the time he does, the hole closes. That's good defense by State, too. Good reaction coming back. It's fourth down, fourth and three. Now, interestingly enough, they're going to go for it. If they would kick a field goal here, they're only a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from tying the game. But they, the way Eckle has kicked, they're, they're going go for, for the a penalty goal. here, Ken. They ride McCarty, and he's got the first down. 
That's a pretty safe bet the way he's been running. I thought they'd go with a, with a change up in the count and try to get five yards on it. They didn't. They go with straight power off the left side. And McCarty's been outstanding today. Now, well, look how he leans. Now, he leans. He's that power back, and he's able to lean for that first down. Junior Ely, Coyle, Ryan over there. Great job by the Buffalo. Time is becoming a factor. 7.50 remaining in this game. And remember, even if Colorado scores, they're going to be four points behind unless they go for the two-point conversion, which they probably will do. They get a touchdown with that defense they have. They're in the game. Keenan still has it. He's eaten up some yardage, but he gets short yardage this time. He really, Keenan is showing you how much they miss with Hatcher being hurt. He couldn't go to the corner. He couldn't get out there quick enough, and Keenan's able to get out there and put pressure on the state defense. He's not a great runner, but he's picking up yardage because state's really not doing a great job forcing the quarterback. And Keenan is, does not have the quickness that a healthy Hatcher would have. There you go. You just saw you just saw a pretty good graphic there when they rush for over 300, which I'm sure they haven't today. They're undefeated, one and two. If they don't, 216 so far. Keenan keeping the ball again, and he's getting some pretty good yardage, eating it up in chunks. But it's going to bring up about a third and three or four. Another thing, I said earlier, the first five games Colorado started the same 22 people, offensively and defensively. The last three weeks. They have had injuries. They have had injuries to their linemen. They have had injuries to Hatcher. They've been in trouble, and they're struggling a little bit. Football luck plays a great part in it. If you can keep people healthy, keep them together week in and week out, you're obviously a lot stronger team. That includes today, third and three. They'll go with McCarty. He's hit once and gets the first down. He's a horse. First and goal, Colorado. I tell you, Kevin, I'm looking at this guy, McCarty, 6'1", 220. These guys are blowing out state, and McCarty, my shoulders hurt from watching this guy. I'd hate to have to come in there, and the way he runs, he runs so low and so tough that the only thing you get from this guy is a helmet and a pair of shoulder pads, and you don't like to play against fullbacks like that. He is a bruising runner. Colorado now taking a timeout. And that's their first that they've used here in the second half with 6.05 remaining in the game, and they're 11 points behind. Wishbone teams need those timeouts more than passing teams. They can't throw the ball out of bounds. They don't have the precision to go up and down the field with a passing game. 14-3 Oklahoma State, and we'll return after these words from Black & Decker, M47 Series Power Tools. The timeout was good for Colorado, but I think it helped State, too. I think they were getting tired in the altitude. They'll run McCarty during the break. Kevin Kiley turned to me, and he said, run McCarty four times. Well, there's one. They're going to pound this guy right up the middle. Coyle is one of the best in the country, number 69. He and McCarty, it's on their shoulders now. What a block. What a great block and a good run by McCarty. Just blew Washington out. John Washington was number 80, and you, they're going to go with their strength. Coyle and McCarty, i got to believe they're going to go right up the middle. Five and a half minutes remaining, 14-3 to three, Oklahoma State. Colorado, just three yards from their first touchdown of the day. There's McCarty. Fumble! Oklahoma State has it. No, Colorado has it. What a break. There's one gold helmet in there. But the, the Oklahoma State player diving on the ball, and he clearly had it. He must have lost it. Well, let's see who this guy is, this lonely buffalo on the bottom of that pile. Well, there's Leslie O'Neill. Well, you would expect to find Leslie in there. I'm surprised Mark Moore's not down there, too. It's Quarterback, Keenan. And I'll tell you, that's a straight dive to the fullback. There's no excuse for this. No excuse for the fumble. All they're doing, they're going right up the middle. He looked like he tried to pull it out from McCarty. I don't know why, and he dropped the ball. But Keenan made the play, came back. Boy, everybody see that ball on the turf going out. Oh, look at see. Oh, that's Les. He got away from Les. Yeah, he just took it away from him because O'Neal had it. I give him the big A player of the week just for getting that fumble right there. O'Neal had that ball. Third and goal now from the eight. He's going to try to throw for it. He's got a lot of running room. And he, oh, he throws for Embry who gets hit. And that'll be pass interference. Clearly, 
against Demise Williams. I think Demise fell on this play. I, I got to believe he fell. Embry had the angle on him. If the ball is over his head and yet short of the end line, it's a touchdown. But I got to believe Demise Williams fell. Keenan, Keenan could have run the ball in. He had that much room on that side. There's the call, pass interference. Here's another look. I can't believe that this is intention. Look on the right side of your screen. This is a good movement, real good movement by Keenan as he gets outside the rush, throws the ball. No, I, I don't know what that is. That looks intentional. I guess he figures it's a touchdown and he's going to leave it up to the defense. Demise, I guess he has to make the reaction play. Not a good play, but it's on the two-yard line, first down. First and goal. Of course, even if it's not intentional, it's the penalty can still be called if you run through a receiver like he did. That play, you have to wonder if there was a chance that he could catch the ball. But as you saw on the replay, Keenan could have waltzed in. Yeah, I thought he tripped. Okay. If you're a linebacker now, you're looking at McCarty and you're coming right up the gut. 4.56 remaining. Keenan has it, and I think he's in. We'll wait and see. The official is going to unpile it here. He's in for the touchdown. Colorado within five. Now, what Keenan did there, he looked like he just faked it to McCarty and rode him in there, used him as a block or a little bit of a wedge, and it worked. Got to go for two here. No question about it. It brings you to a field goal and a tie. Now, officially, they're going to say that McCarty scored the touchdown. That's the official ruling, but you could pick either one. They were hold, both holding on to it that time. Keenan again. He's got it. They're within three with 4.49 left. Boy, that play has just killed Oklahoma State. That little fake and the counter by the quarterback just killing him. And a great block by Coyle again. Open up a super hole for Keenan to go. The Keenan's not a great runner, but he's doing some damage. Okay, let's go with the touchdown. Coyle, 69. You're going to see Keenan and McCarty, 14 and 32. Who's got it? Who cares? They're both over. That's why it took so long to call it. Nobody yeah. knew who had it. And now the extra point. It's a counter. Washington gets blocked by Coyle. Keenan standing straight up. Goes in for the extra point. Two points. They trail by three. Keenan unofficially has 55 yards rushing coming into the game at quarterback for Colorado. 4.49 left. 14-11 Oklahoma State. And he nails this kick. Riley into his end zone will leave it there. Uh, Echo wishes he could have kicked a field goal or two like that, and they'd have the lead. So the situation is right there for the Colorado defense now. <laughs> now I got to believe that they're going to come hard with this defense doing everything now. They're going to throw it on first down, and it's over the head of Riley. Yeah, they came with the blitz. They came with the blitz. Deluzio, number 49, right up the middle. Pressure. Williams threw it real quick. Watch him. 49, he gets picked up. Williams feels it. He throws it out, but it's too long. Credit Pruitt with getting in the passing lane there. You see him at the bottom of your screen. He had to throw the ball high, or Pruitt was looking at six the other way. Remember the screen last week. Big play against Kansas. The screen to Thurman Thomas was a game breaker. That, that incomplete pass plays into Colorado's hands. It killed just three seconds on the clock. The draw play to Thomas. Oh, he nearly got outside, but Conley Smith got a hold of his foot, and then everybody met at the ball carrier. Very safe play, and Thurman Thomas almost broke it. I'll tell you, you better watch out for this guy. Here they come again, Deluzio. Remington's the safety valve number 40. He gets blocked, and if we don't get Smith outside here, it's a gone goose, at least the first down. That guy's quick, I'll tell you. He's an eye back, and he can get outside. Just, just in a second. What a play by Connolly Smith. Screen and draw here. Look out for the screen pass to Thurman Thomas. Third and six. Listen to this crowd. Thomas is wide open. First down. Well, you called it, but you wonder how could you leave him that wide open? Well, you, you have to. You can't you can't put a guy on an eye back man to man, but your zone has got to play tighter than this. I, I tell you what, I'm in this guy's shirt. I'm in his shirt. 
I never let him loose on a play like that. He's their game breaker. You can't let him loose on a big game and a big play like that. 358 left. First down, and they'll run Thomas now until you stop him. And they do for a short game. Colorado has run off 72 plays to 51 for Oklahoma State, yet they trail by three. Now that, again, that's the wishbone, really, with 342. A wishbone needs so much time, and now late in the game, that first down was critical because they get the, they can run off another two minutes. And wishbone, it's not like a passing offense. A minute is enough late in the game for most offenses, but a wishbone needs two or three minutes. And not only that, but it moved the ball 10 yards further away from the goal line, and that'll be much better punting position if they need to punt. Thomas again, knocked sideways, and I mean Remington really laid it on him. Remington put the wood to him on that one. Oh, I like that. 6'4", 225, he had that inside-out move. Watch Barry Remington and watch why he's a great linebacker. Number 40, he reads it, and boom, you don't see him, but Thurman Thomas can feel him. He turned him sideways. Timeout called by Colorado. They will have one timeout remaining. And Oklahoma State faces a third and a long seven. Tell you what the wishbone does to you now. The timeout they called earlier, that was a critical timeout when they were driving for a touchdown. Now they've got another timeout. Dillard, the tight end, has not caught a pass today. Here comes Williams. It depends where they spot it. Oh, they're going to spot it up at the 42, and that would be a first down. That's a first down. They wanted to go to Dillard, number 87. But oh, what a great job that they did on the defense for Colorado on Dillard. But here's Williams. He's looking. He's waiting for Dillard to clear. He doesn't clear. Williams, great sophomore, great reaction, terrific athlete, picks up the first down. And that is a big, that's a bold first down there, folks. That may do it with under three minutes left. That's a good job by the defense. That's a broken play. Two critical third down conversions for Oklahoma State. And Colorado is in deep trouble. Thomas, everybody coming now. He's hitting the backfield by Mickey Pruitt, the strong safety. Well, you know, if you're courageous, you fake that to hand off your drop back, and everybody ought to be open. What a job Thurman Thomas has done. Sure hands, he doesn't fumble. You're right, everybody's coming. A lot of Buffaloes, angry Buffaloes out there. Trying to corral some Cowboys. Thurman Thomas, 194 yards, 32 rushes, no fumbles for Thurman Thomas and two touchdowns. He's done it all today. 60-yard touchdown run at the outset of the second half is the winner right now with two minutes remaining. <laughs> Barring a turnover, that first down probably wrapped it up. Thomas, near midfield, near another first down. It'll bring up third and three. Got to tackle the ball. Got to tackle the ball now. And they'll use their last time out with a minute 50 remaining. The great backs, they bounce off of people. It's incredible. I don't know how they do it, but watch Thomas. Watch him bounce. He gets hit. He bounces always forward. McMillan making the hit. He's so much bigger than Thomas, but Thomas still drags him another yard. Now Colorado is unable to stop the clock. Well, it really doesn't matter. This was the place for the timeout. If they don't get the ball back, they won't need that timeout. And if they stop them on this play, then of course the clock will stop for the change of possession after the punt, and at least the offense will get a crack at it. Remember, they only need a field goal to tie, and Larry Echol, the place kicker for Colorado's, had a rough day. He's one out of four, and he would dearly love a chance at redemption. I think they need to give Larry a running start. He does a lot better on kickoffs. Might mention Tom Reinhardt in your picture there, the brother of Ed Reinhardt, who injured himself in the Oregon game a year ago. And uh, from what we've been able to... Well, it depends on the spot again. They may give him a first down, and it looks like they're going to spot it good enough for first down yardage. And if so, that will do it. What a job by Conley Smith on the corner for Colorado. He did exactly what you had to do. He came in and just crushed the lead blocker, made Thurman go laterally, but he's so quick. Well, where they spot the ball, unless it's a matter of inches, it's a first down. And, you, you know, with this opportunity, you got to give tremendous credit to this Oklahoma State offensive line if they're going to be short. Maybe a foot. Well, you got to put it away. And you got to block the punt. If you're a wishbone team, you don't want it on the 20. You want it on the 50. A minute 44 remaining, but Colorado is without another timeout. 
Yeah, they have to have field position. Pat Jones is going to punt it. He waves his offense off. They wanted to stay on and go for another first down. Yeah. Well, Pat, that, that would not be that would not be the right thing to do when Pat knows it. I mean, your, your heart tells you, let's go. We'll end it right here, but yeah. your, your brain then takes over and says you're only a field goal ahead. Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. If, if you're in the defensive huddle now, the thing is you have to sit back on your heels. You have to sit back on your heels. You can't let the snap count. See, they'll try the snap count thing. If they can pull you off, he's got all his defensive backs, his little guys in here. Colorado only has eight players on the field, nine players. They're little guys, though. They're real quick, real quick. Watch out for the snap count here. If they draw them out off, it's a first down. But it would help if you had two more. Yeah, well, it always does, yeah. Mess up the blocking. Somebody's going to catch it when they watch the films of this one. They've only got eight players up front and JoJo Collins deep. They'll take a penalty here, hoping to jump Colorado offside. They'll get a delay a game and they'll kick it from five yards back. You know, I got to believe that's the first time one team had 11, the other had eight or nine, and they took a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all you have to do is make a head count, and you know you got more up there. Now Colorado makes an adjustment here. Look at the guys they have in there, all these little guys. Let's get some numbers here. Got they still only got 10. A little quicker. This may be some kind of special play we don't know about, a secret play. Give Dan McMillan credit. He came out and counted and then waved to the sideline. Here comes and in Deluzio. comes Deluzio. Yeah. All defensive backs. They better hope this isn't a running play. <laughs> here they come. They're going to come after this one. Thompson just wants to catch it and then get rid of it. Good snap. And he gets it off. Oh. Collins giving it some chase. He takes it on the run. He needs to get out of bounds. They'll stop it on the change of possession, but when that ball is ready for play, they'll snap the clock going again with 111 left. Pretty good job by Colorado getting the ball back. Not a bad job defensively, and as you pointed out, what a great job by Oklahoma State. Eating up the clock, doing what they had to do, and not making a mistake. They just don't, they simply don't make mistakes. We talk about this wishbone of Colorado, but keep in mind that Keenan, who's running it right now, is a passer. He started the last four games of last season, and he was an effective passer. So he is the right guy to have in there when you need to come from behind, but you're 80 yards from the opponent's goal line with a minute 11 and no timeouts, and that's a formidable task, and they'll stay in the wishbone. Not an en not an enviable uh, place. I, I will move Ron Brown outside, and they, you may see him headed down the field here. That fake's not holding anybody. Ferrando, a leaping catch at the 36. The clock will stop with the first down. Ferrando and Mike Marquez was loose on the top side. That from the defensive point of view, who do you guard in a wishbone? If these guys start running around like crazy, they really don't have an, a wide open passing attack, and it's tough to key in on receivers. A minute remaining, and the clock is running. And here's Brown. He heads for the sideline. Smart thinking by him, and he's out of bounds. 53 seconds left. Remember, they need field goal range. And that's all they need to tie the game. You certainly would like to win, but. Realistically, right. Realistically, I think Colorado would like to have a tie. They say at home that you go for the win, but I think the nature of their offense and what they have to do to get in the end zone, which would be to pound it in if they got close and not throw it in, I think a tie would be really w w a big, big, a big, big, uh, big, big victory. Play, big, yeah, a big, big victory. It'd be big anyway. It'd be something. Yeah. He picked up five, second down. Keenan is getting time. He guns it down the middle to Embry, who fumbles the ball. Now they call it incomplete. Ooh, oh, I think, that was close. I think he caught it. I think he caught it. He never came down, but I think he caught it. Embry's the guy. This is a lot of coverage here, and what a pass. I think he's got that thing. And now he does it. At any rate, it's a it's a good call, really, for Colorado. They call it incomplete, and uh, Oklahoma State's still on defense, but we got a third down. The guy that I saw, number 20, Mark, Mike Marquez, who's in the game, he's a pretty good receiver, and he was loose on first down. Collins is your deep threat, and he's to the near side, and he's got double coverage. Of course, they're double covering Ferrando at the top of your screen. Here comes the rush. Down he goes, and it's O'Neal. And the clock is running, and Marquez was loose straight down the field. And he's got a long way to come back, and he's not sprinting. The clock's still ticking, and he better hurry. Keenan just didn't pull the trigger. It seemed to me Keenan saw him. He just didn't pull the trigger. If he'd have laid the thing out there, he had a shot at it. 
25 seconds left, and it's fourth down and 12. Not only do they need a completion, but they need the 12 over Embry's head, and that will do it. He was wide open at the Oklahoma State 45-yard line. And Keenan collapsed, just collapsed on his back, put his arms out. He knew that the pass, as soon as he threw it, he knew it was a bad pass. Oklahoma State by a field goal, and they made it stand up, and they'll drop down after the snap. Look at everybody around Williams. They'll shake his hand, and this one's in the books. Oklahoma State surviving two road tests back-to-back, -back, and they came through in both of them. 17-10 at Kansas, 14-11 here. And for Bill McCartney, a disappointing loss.